This is the first day of worldwide power outages. Schools were closed. Students are happy as if they have won the lottery. Companies are closing early. Corporate slaves are cheering. What they don't know is that it's going to last a long, long time. Supermarkets are overcrowded. Bento and candles were all sold out. Mineral water was sold at 2,500 yen a bottle. Rolex and Maseratis couldn't get a bag of rice. Toilets without water smelled suffocating. Have you ever imagined living with such a massive power outage? Yushiyuki living in Tokyo with his wife and children. The first day of the blackout. He didn't wake up until 3 p.m. Because he didn't have an alarm clock. He rushed to the office and found that no one cared about him. The company door didn't even open properly. They broke in and found that the computer was not working either. So they had to leave work early. Yushiyuki's children, who were studying, were also out of school. In the evening, every family had a candlelit dinner. But the atmosphere was a bit depressing. The third day of the power outage, the school was closed indefinitely and the company went on vacation. The water pump stopped working. There is no water in the city. Day 7 of the blackout, fewer and fewer people in the neighborhood. Yushiyuki saw an elderly widow starving to death upstairs. He decided to take his family on a bicycle to Kagoshima, where his father-in-law lives, to seek refuge. Yui was a bit reluctant to do so. How long would it take to get there on a bike? Besides, she didn't like going to the countryside at all. But Yoshiyuki was adamant that everyone should go with him. They searched every corner of the house for cash. The four of them packed their bags and went on their way. They wanted to ride their bikes to other counties and then change planes. On the way, they saw the price of mineral water increase from 1,000 yen to 2,500 yen. Even so, people were rushing to buy mineral water as if they didn't want to pay for it. There is no way to use the public toilet without water. The smell could be smelled for 10 miles around. The family had been riding for two days when they could hardly see the plane. Besides them, there were countless people rushing to the airport. But the plane was also grounded. People outside the airport were in chaos. There were even fights. No one knew why the power was out. But they all knew that without electricity they could die. Yoshiyuki found a hotel. The owner was furious and said it would cost 30,000 yen a night for one person. Yui thought she could go home tomorrow, but Yoshiyuki threw cold water on her. How can a city survive without water or food? But when has Yui ever suffered such hardship? Even his wife was scared. She guessed that the surrounding cities were also without electricity. But she also knew her husband wouldn't listen to her. The next day, they continued their journey to Kagoshima. People lined up at a roadside grocery store to get food. But only food can be exchanged for food. All the luxuries were a mere decoration at this moment. Yoshiyuki exchanged a few bottles of water for a bicycle for his wife to ride. On a highway with a global power outage, some people walk, some skateboard, some ride bikes. This is as lively as going home for Christmas. They rush during the day. They sleep under the tree at night. The four of them shared a thin blanket. On the 16th day of the power outage, they ran wildly in the rainstorm. The rain was pouring over their faces and blocking their vision. Finally, they had to abandon their bicycles to hide from the rain. The four of them squatted on the sides looking at the sky and the earth. When the rain stopped, their luggage was scattered all over the place. The tires were also broken. Two children went to the supermarket to look for food. After 10 days, they had run out of food supplies. But most of the supermarket shelves were empty. They scavenged for distilled water and flares and so on. Yushiyuki Saturday on the grass and persisted in drilling wood for fire. Kenji Saturday down next to him and cut cell phone cases and concentrated on fixing tires. Everyone knew they had no way out at this point. They had to work together as a family. On the road again, they came across a group of backpackers. The four men looked at the food on their table and gulped with envy. They simply Saturday down and watched the meat. The backpackers found them and struck up a conversation. The backpackers taught them a lot about survival, where to find water, what wild vegetables to eat. Yoshiyuki ignored their advice. He feels frustrated. He brought his family out and made them suffer. His wife called him over to listen and learn together. Four people standing together. A backpacker takes a picture of them. He promised to send them the photos later when he had the chance. Chance. A group of people walking together for a while. A few days later, the Yoshiyuki family and the backpackers went their separate ways. They were going to Osaka because they heard that there was electricity there. On the 43rd day of the blackout, bicycles rolled into the city. The streets were littered with garbage. Every house was closed. There was no electricity in Osaka either. The faith they had been holding onto collapsed. Yui was devastated. She blamed her father for bringing them out on his own. She hadn't bathed or washed her hair for so many days. She didn't even get to eat. 
Even Kenji expressed his discontent. Even though Mitsu was persuasive, but she also showed her incomprehension of Yushiyuki. Yushiyuki Saturday down on his butt. He never thought that his family would not understand him like this. But what he did was really for their own good. They passed by the aquarium and saw people cooking seafood. It turned out that people could not stand the hunger and broke the glass of the aquarium. They took out all the seafood and cooked it. The Yushiyuki family rushed to line up for food. But when it was their turn to receive food, the food ran out. Yushiyuki looked at his family, who was getting thin and desperate. He got down on his knees and begged them to give some food to the children. But to no avail, the food distributor left without a backward glance. On the 68th day of the power outage, four people were walking in the fields. They were yellow and thin. Their faces were pale and disheveled. Yui's stomach rumbled as she Saturday on the stalk. Yushiyuki saw a pig not far away. What used to be the most common thing was now the rarest. They had caught the pig. They were trembling and ready to cut the meat. An old man scolded them. Then he took out a professional tool. His skill in killing the pig showed that he was a big pig farmer. Jack took them home. Once the family of fur arrived at the house, they ran to the well as if they were starving. The four refugees gobble at the dinner table. They work for Jack and help him catch the pigs as a reward. The field was full of them trying to run after the pigs. Jack offered them to stay and work. He provided them with food and shelter. But Yushiyuki knew his wife was worried about her parents in the countryside and refused Jack's help. This time his children did not oppose him again. Along the way they saw their father's love and commitment. Learn it a lot. They have grown up a lot. Yui can even mend her own clothes, although she ended up sewing her own clothes and couldn't take them apart. They took the smoked pork from Jack and went on their way again. Following the map they came to a big river. They were dumbfounded by the fast flowing water. Kenji slammed the map on the ground in anger. Yushiyuki ran to the river without saying a word to collect sticks and try to make a raft. Kenji looked at his family who had gone to help, and after a moment of silence, he also stood up to help. They pushed the raft into the river, for people swam and pushed at the same time. After they reached the other side of the river, Yushiyuki and Kenji went back to the other side to carry the bicycle. On the way, it started to rain heavily. Raindrops the size of beans pelted their bodies. The raft was also overwhelmed and kept tilting. Kenji couldn't take it anymore. He let go and swam to the other side. The raft was completely out of control. The bike slid down and hit Yushiyuki's face. Yushiyuki disappeared from view little by little. After the sky cleared, Kenji only found his father's wig by the river. Mitsu cried out when she saw it. The loss of her husband was the hardest blow to her. For the rest of the journey she walked like a corpse without food or drink. When they reached the mountains, the smell of bacon in Mitsu's bag attracted a pack of vicious dogs. Mother and son closed their eyes in despair as they watched the dogs approach. It's a old train. They were saved. The conductor on the train bandages Mitsu. When he asked the children about their father's whereabouts, all three were silent. Yui hid her face and cried. But Mitsu suddenly saw something and stood up and stuck her head out the window. It was their father. It turned out that Yushiyuki was not dead. He was swept away by the current to another riverbank. He crawled to the field with his breath and met the train. The children rushed off the train to greet their father. The train started again, but this time, they felt very stable in their hearts. As they passed through the tunnel, they were blackened by the black smoke because of their inexperience. After a coughing feat, they looked at each other and smiled. Everything will pass. The dawn will come. The Yoshiyuki family arrived in Keikoshima on the 108th day of the power outage. There they lived the most primitive life. Kinchi follows the group on a fishing trip. Yui is learning to weave cloth. Everyone here has no cell phones or computers. But every day is a happy one for them. One day, two years later, Yoshiyuki woke up suddenly. He rummaged through the room, full of electrical appliances, and found an alarm clock that was ringing. Everyone else realized what was going on and came out of the house. One by one, the street lights came on. They saw the most beautiful image of their lives. Does this mean that the dawn has really come? Survival Family was released in Japan in 2017. He tells an apocalyptic story with a very low cost. In fact, our lives don't need an earthquake or a typhoon to be destroyed. Our lives become difficult as long as the electricity is cut off. We are used to being surrounded by modern civilization. If we lose our cell phones and computers, there will be no more fun. Those primitive pleasures are far, far away from us when people go back to the countryside and start farming. Only then do they realize that life can still be lived like this. If there are such conditions, we all put down the hands of electronic products to go outside to see and walk a little. You will have a different experience.